G'day everyone and welcome back. My name is Mike Jeffrey and you are listening to My Creative Journey, episode number four. I feel like I'm going to continue to say this every week, but it just amazes me how we how we keep turning up here every Monday and keep keep producing these episodes. Also, how good is is that is that intro music? I feel like I'm really enjoying it and really starting to get into it. This is the first time that I've actually had it on in the headphones as I record, so I'm just trying to give it some space to try and breathe there. Let me know what you think of the intro music. I was a bit hesitant at the start when I was creating the podcast to actually put music at the start. I didn't know whether it would be a bit too cliche, but I did think um, I did particularly enjoy this track. So I thought I would throw it on at the start and I do like the way that it really amps me up before we start the episode. In today's episode, guys, I'm going to be talking about uh, why you should take your job seriously. And I think um, it's a very important uh, episode. Um, It's one that I think most people would overlook, but I think I do come at it from a very unique perspective. It's something that I've been trying to deal with a lot over the past year um, in my own creative business and trying trying to make sure that I am taking my job seriously as anyone else would who would be working in a nine to five role. Um, I think it's easy to slack off in a business or any business where you are only working for yourself. And so I'm going to try and come at that and give you guys some advice and some uh, and some insights, I guess, into some of the things that I've been trying to do. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm the, the expert of all things self-employment, but um, I do have some little insights there that I'm going to try and give you guys a bit later. But first, let's jump into what has been going on this week and First off, I wanted to talk about a little opportunity that I had uh, last Tuesday, actually. I spoke about it on last week's podcast that I was going to take photos of an event uh, last Tuesday, and I actually got the opportunity to take uh, the photos for the Invasion Day rally here in Sydney uh, last Tuesday. I was there on behalf of the Koori Mail newspaper, Um, so hopefully those photos will be published next week, I think, in next week's edition of that newspaper, but... I just want to speak more generally to um, the opportunity that I had there and the the uh, skills, I guess, that I did learn from the day. I think it was a very different uh, style of style of shoot for me. I've never done something uh, such sort of documentary style of photography. Um, and to be honest, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I actually came away from the day thinking that um, I could actually see myself trying to do a lot a lot more of that. Um, was always uh, a style that I was interested in and a style that I wanted to pursue. Obviously, I've spoken about wanting to start my own wedding photography business and an aspect of that is that style of documentary photography, I guess, standing back, taking photos of things as they happen and and just being able to have the eye for, for different types of things that other people probably wouldn't see. And so that sort of style for me was the first time I'd really done that and stood back and, and sort of taken photos from different angles and been able to move around and and sort of use different lenses to try and to try and create the effect that I was that I was really after on the day. Um, there was no sort of set brief where I had to get a shot of this particular person or this particular speaker, um, which, to be honest, I quite enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed having that bit of freedom, which I know is not something that you always get as a photographer being hired by an external company. I don't think you always get that freedom, but. I really enjoyed just being able to walk around and to document that sort of day. If you do have me over on Instagram, you would have seen that I, I went into the shoot with quite a few different lens choices uh, on the day. And that was that was mostly because I'd never really I'd never really done that style of shoot before. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that I had all my different bases covered and really didn't miss the shot that would be so important. To be honest, I, I spent a lot of time in a lot closer than I expected to be. I went in with a uh, a really long zoom lens and I, I thought that I'd be standing a long way back trying to get out of the action, didn't want to be in too close. I'm not really someone who loves to shoot uh, up close and personal. I like to stand back and sort of document from a bit further away and, and, and use that angle and change things up just to, just to make it a bit more interesting. But I actually found myself in a lot closer than I expected to be shooting on more of a wide angle lens and and, and really being able to document that as if I was actually there in the environment, which I really 
enjoyed and and i think i can see myself moving forward as i said trying to work more with that with that documentary style i spoke about it um, a few weeks ago and i think i'll speak on it again in a future episode about only trying to do the work that you actually really want to do and i think that always works up until a point but when opportunities like this do come around i think it's so important to be able to grab them with both hands and and just especially when it's a style uh, that you've that you haven't worked in before, if an opportunity comes around for, for 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 something that you aren't too sure on, it probably means that you probably should have a go at it because you just don't know what it's going to work out. And really, what's the worst that can happen? I walk away from that shoot and think, oh, I really hated that. I'm I'm never going to go back again. That that really isn't too much sweat off my back. So. At the end of the day, I'm really glad that I went and went and took up that opportunity, and it gives me more, a lot more confidence going into starting up my own business in that wedding photography space. When I can use those different choice of lenses and do have more creative control uh, over taking styles of photos, whether it be those documentary photos or or it be the stand up style of portraits that I have been taking for quite some time now. Um, something else that I've been uh, thinking about through the week has been as I said, starting this wedding photography business and trying to get into that. But I feel like I've been so heavily uh, invested in that that I've almost forgotten that I am still trying to uh, make my business successful and I still need to be able to support myself through that. So I feel like I've sort of pushed a lot of other things into the background and I've sort of tried to make a hard switch um, without just changing slowly. Um, If that makes sense, I feel... Like I've I've sort of dropped everything else off that I was working on at the end of last year and just tried to start new. And I mean, to some degree that works, but I feel like I probably shouldn't have dropped it as hard as I could. So I've, I, I sort of sat down this morning and sort of planned out a bit of where I'd like to go with this next month or two. And, I, and as part of that, I think some of it is incorporating the work that I was trying to do last year and, and still trying to do some of the work that is going to make me some money going forward so that I can sustain myself as I move into this wedding photography business, which I know isn't going to make me a lot of money in the start. So hopefully I'm going to try and push that back a few weeks. I know I spoke about last week trying to to just put myself out there more and trying to get myself some exposure and some opportunities in that industry, whether it be just going out and having to shoot for free at the start and really putting myself out there and opening myself up to those sorts of opportunities. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to try and push that back a couple of weeks so I can sort of start to advertise a bit more in the work that I was doing so I can get more business in that and then sort of push into, into the wedding photography industry as the year continues on. I've been, it's, it's one of those weird things, I think, with uh, changing into a, a new industry because I've been speaking to a few people about it and everyone, I think, has had the same thing to say in that oh, I didn't think that you would be so interested in in heading in that direction or I didn't think that would be right for you or isn't that going to be so stressful or or this, that and the other. And I think everyone is going to have their thing to say. And I think that's one of the big things in changing uh, any type of career or any any style, I think, in any artistic endeavor. Um, We spoke about this last week in why people don't change. And I think one of those things is overcoming stereotypes and your own stereotype that you've you have created over the past however long you've been in a certain industry and i think it was one of the big things that i did i did come across when changing into the photography industry was overcoming the stereotype of the thing that people thought i should have been doing before um, and the thing that i've always been working towards and just changing that so so abruptly in their eyes i think is very hard because people don't see all the work below the surface they don't see the the hours that you have been actually working and, and researching and trying to trying to change and the things that you you actually haven't been as interested in something else before as as they might have thought you've been or you're not as or they don't realize how interested you are in this new in this new path that you're trying to go down and so people are always going to have their thing to say about that uh, specific type of thing and I think that is something that does hold some people back and I'm trying to not let that uh, hold me back or or slow me down in a way because overcoming that stereotype of people not thinking that I would I would like a particular style 
is uh, is a hard one. And it's part of the reason that I wanted to go into the wedding photography industry is because I feel like it's so far outside of something that I ever would have done a few years ago. It's so far outside of something that I would have seen as being possible before. I had that belief that it just wasn't for me. And I think I, I spoke about this in the first episode that I had thought about wedding photography this time last year. And I, I, I really genuinely sat down and thought, is that something that I could do? And I, and I ended up saying, no, I don't think so. I don't think that I have the skills for it. I don't think that I have the personality for it. I don't think that I am, am up to it at all. And that to me was a limiting belief that I wasn't able to do that. And that, that is one of the things that I've had to push through and it is in my personality, I guess, just to push through that and to try and the best way to overcome a hurdle is to just jump 10 feet above it um, because I just really want to put, throw myself in, in the deep end and I think I'll either sink or swim and I'm hoping that, hoping that I can swim in a way because I, I feel like I need, to, I need to prove to myself first and foremost that I am able to do this and I think over this journey over the past year I have proven it to myself but now... I think other people are going to start bringing up those questions. So I just have to be 100% sure in myself that this is the this is really the thing that I want to be doing, and and I have to have to just keep right there and continue to prove that. And I think the best way to to actually prove that is, is to continue to do the work that you're saying that you really want to do. So yeah, that has been that journey for me so far this week, and a few things that I've been thinking about. I've actually had a rather busy week over the past week, as I said, I did that work last Tuesday was editing the photos for a couple of days um, there, but I actually took a few days off. I went home for a few days last week and I had the the end half of last week off. So I didn't actually get around to editing last week's episode. So you probably haven't heard that yet. I'm sure it will be up at some point. It'll be up before this episode, obviously. So by now you probably have heard it, but it was probably a bit delayed in being up there. And that's, that's something that... Uh, I feel like uh, I don't know. I'm 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 trying not to be too strict on myself on that because I know I don't want this to be something I end up dreading and something that I get a few episodes in and I just stop because the editing process is too hard. I think I got to give myself time to get there and and as I said, it's only going to get easier in that editing process. It it was really tough in the first episode, as I said, and the second one was a lot easier than the, than the first one, and it it only gets better. But I just haven't had the time to get around to editing that third episode, so. Hopefully it'll be up soon, guys, and you probably will have heard it by the time this one goes live. But one of the things that I was thinking about with that episode, the third episode, I really struggled to get through it. I think it was really uh, weighing on my mind that I had to get to a certain time frame, uh, I guess. And having that constraint, I, uh, I don't think is always the best thing. So one of the things I've been thinking about through this week is trying to bring myself back from the mark that... I had set myself. I think one of the most important things is to just turn up on the day and regardless of whether it's for an hour or half an hour, I don't think that should really matter. And so I'm not trying to set myself a certain amount of time that I have to speak for because some days are harder than others and some days I just don't have have the things to speak about that I do on on other days. And some days I just have other things going on if there's stress, if I've got to work on something else and it's not something. I think the most important thing is that I just still continue to turn up and regardless of, of whether um, I get half hour out or I get an hour out, I don't think that should really matter because I'm still turning up and, and getting that episode out there. So I'm trying not to put that to put that pressure on myself to, to continue for an hour because at the end of the day, if, I'm, if I've spoken for half an hour and I've got nothing else to say, speaking for another half hour really isn't, isn't really going to help my case at all because it's, all it's going to do is upset you guys and you're going to have to sit through half hour of that, especially if you just have it on the background and I don't want to be a person to try and waste anyone's time here so hopefully these episodes can continue to be just as long as they have been but I know some weeks that they're not going to be and so I've had to have that sort of mental shift in a way to sort of allow myself for that to be okay to slow down and sort of um, and to not have the episodes be as long if they're not if they're not as information heavy and I don't have as many things to speak about then it's okay just to have a half hour episode every now and again. And finally, one last thing that I wanted to touch on just before I get to the topic of today's podcast, which I promise you I will get to. I know I've been speaking for quite a while now, but I just wanted to touch on my goals for this year. Just for context, today is actually the 1st of February I'm recording this episode. So I just wanted to touch on some of my goals for the year being that we've already gone through a whole month of the year. I can't believe we're already into February. 
just seems crazy to me so far. But I wanted to touch on a few of those goals and see where I'm up to with them. I know I spoke about them in the first episode. And I think it's important to sort of look back and sort of take the time to reflect on where you are and where you're heading with the particular goals that I've been making. So one of the goals that I obviously said I wanted to start this podcast and and we're here, we're now four episodes in. Well, I'm now recording the fourth episode and on the 1st of February, that's pretty good uh, considering I'm trying to record one every week. So I'm pretty happy with that and I'm really glad where we've come with it. I feel like it's just starting to get easier and each week I feel like I'm, I'm more excited to turn up and actually make these episodes. I know that eventually it'll get harder and it'll get, it'll get to a point where I'm not wanting to make them, but I want to continue to push that momentum forward while I still have uh, still have that drive in the beginning and still have that momentum off the start uh, of be able to keep to keep that growth up. I know that it's easy in, in the first few weeks of, of being like it's improving every week and you can really see that uh, dramatic improvement as the first few weeks go on. It's, it's fairly exponential uh, as you would say in being the growth in the first few weeks but I feel like as anything, it'll it'll start to tail off um, as as we start to really get into our groove. And at that point, it's not as easy to see the growth. So I just want to keep being able to push and push that momentum so it's harder to slow down when that time does come. Another thing I said was I wanted to run uh, a half marathon this year and I wanted to run 100 kilometers each month. And I am proud to say that I did run my 100 kilometers in January. So that's pretty cool already off to a great start there i'm thinking about trying to uh i'm thinking about signing up to run a half marathon in july but we could see one a lot earlier than that i'm still i'm knowing whether i should try and do one before that and try and get a a bit of a head start on the year and see if i can actually have one of those goals knocked off pretty early in the year so maybe i'm i'm feeling pretty good and i think that uh, it's a good time to be able to do them in, in those winter months already being on a roll as we are but then i i do feel for the end half of the month trying to keep up that training after i've already done one of i feel like i need something else to work towards but i'm going to continue to update you guys as we go well one of my other key goals for this year was to be able to make my business financially profitable i guess and and be able to sustain myself off my business um surprisingly to say i've actually made a little bit of money uh in the start of january i didn't really do much work in the first couple of weeks but then in the end half of the, of the month I made a little bit of money doing a bit of work here and there and and made a little bit off uh, some other passive income streams as well. So that's that's fairly good and that's going to continue to grow hopefully through the year. As I said, I'm, I'm, I, I sort of pushed that a bit to the wayside as I was trying to work on my wedding photography, um, advertising and sort of promotion and all that sort of stuff. But I feel like I've got to pick that back up now and, and, and realize that it needs to be at uh, I need to be able to make that money for my business to be sustainable and I need to put that at the forefront. So when I continue to grow from there, I don't really mind that it's a bit below what I was expecting in January, but all things considered that I didn't do a lot of work in January, I'm, I'm actually glad to, to actually see where it's at. One thing that hasn't gone as well this month is my reading. I know I've been on, on holidays for quite a while, but uh, I didn't actually read that much this month and I'm starting to feel a bit behind the eight ball on that, on being able to read my 12 books for the year. I'm only halfway through the the book that I'm reading at the moment, Twelve Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. I feel like I'm I'm it's starting to to really drain on me to actually get through those books. I know that um, it did at the end of last year as well, and it's it's tough to find the time during the day because I feel like I'm not the best of reader, as I said last week. So finding that time and actually sitting down and reading, uh, and it, it actually does take me a lot of time to get through a few pages. So I've been considering a few options and. I'm going to put one out to you guys now and ask if, if there's any feedback there that you guys may have. Just send me a message. I'd love to hear what your thoughts on it. But I've been thinking about trying audiobooks. And, and one of the reasons why I think is is for that speed. Uh, I'm, I am quite a slow reader. And I think having that uh, audiobook aspect could speed it up, speed up the process in a way. Because most of the time that I'm taking reading the books comes down to how slow of a reader I am. I know I love to love to read a book and I would love to try having the audio book on in the background as I'm reading. So it sort of speeds up my reading process and I'm not having to having to think about it so much and and sort of still uh, being able to take in the information and, and 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 digest what they're having to say rather than spending so long and actually reading the words and and taking my time with that. So if any of you guys have tried audiobooks before, I'd love to know what you what you think on them. I've heard a few 
a few mixed things. I know that audiobooks can be something that you can just have on in the background and sometimes you can just forget and sort of skip over a few things. But I know that's the same and I can do that when I'm reading a book as well. I can just sit there and have read a whole page and get to the end of it and not have any idea what they've just said because I've just been been reading over it while my mind's been elsewhere. So I guess in that way it's, it's sort of the same, but I'm trying to see whether uh, – I'd like to just experiment with that over this next month and see whether that is something that I can sort of get behind and and see audiobooks becoming part of my daily routine and hopefully they can start to replace uh, some of the hours that I would have spent reading because I do find that such a such a hard task to sit down and try and do even though I know it's it's so good for me it's like exercise in the way that I know it's so tough and and it's it's hard for me to find that time when I'm not enjoying it so maybe something else to spice it up a little bit of audiobook here and there could be something to improve that. And the other one that I'm a bit behind on, as I've already spoken about it, is my weddings and wanting to shoot 10 weddings this year. I think that was a very ambitious goal, but still one that I can achieve. But I'm just a bit behind on it at the moment, and I don't want to really rush that uh, without having other things in place in order to in order to get to that goal. Um, so hopefully we're gonna we're gonna be trying to push to that in the next few weeks. But we've got a few other things lined up before. I start rushing into that and hoping uh, that that all goes well. So I just wanted to give you that little update, guys, on on where I am because it is the first of the month and I'm going to try and sort of check back in at the start of every month probably and sort of have this as a regular segment that I can can sort of keep up to date with you guys with with those things and and, and so you can sort of learn about where where it is that I am with all my goals and just to show you that it's not always... Uh, as easy as as just having the goal there that sometimes you, you're able to get behind on them but I think it's one of the good things is why they're why we have these goals for the year as I spoke about in the first episode I think having goals for the year is a good thing because you can break them up into chunks and just because you do have a bad month doesn't mean the next month has to be all bad it doesn't mean that you can't actually get to your goal I think a month is is too short of a time frame to have a goal over of course you can have little have little targets towards your yearly goal but being able to extend them over a whole year, I think, is is a great amount of time to be able to see that change and see uh, change in your life and, and direction and, and be able to get those habits to stick. So that will be a continual segment, guys, where I update you at the start of every month. But now after that very long introduction and very long uh, explainer on what I've been up to for the past week, I want to jump into today's topic, which is about uh, taking your job seriously. And it's been one of the things that I guess I've struggled with over the past uh, year or so in being in business and working just basically for myself uh, and not having anyone around me. I know a lot of people have probably had a, had a few of these things um, be a bit hard for them and they've experienced them probably for the first time over the past 12 months having worked from home. Uh, I think a lot of people have, have struggled in, in isolation and struggled to work by themselves without without a team around them and so these are things that I've I've really had to come to terms with, and I know that that is going to be that is just going to be how I am into the future. Uh, and working by myself is just going to become the norm. So I need to get used to that. But I think it's not the fact that uh, the isolation, in a way, and that's not probably something that I'm going to address today. But I know that is a factor. But I'm going to be talking a lot more about uh, me personally in a creative career and being my own boss in a way, and. And uh, all the things that do come along with that, and regardless of where I'm working, just having the structure in place around that, so that I can uh, can actively take on my role uh, without it being too overwhelming. And so, with that being said, I just wanted to give you guys like five tips or five points really to consider when starting your own creative business. And I think there are some things that people do overlook and do uh, think that these things will be easier when starting your own business and and starting to work for yourself and I think as an outsider it's pretty easy to uh, have a look at some of these things that I'm going to say and think that how could I complain or how could I say those things are hard but I don't think it's really until you experience them for yourself that you will start to understand the uh, the journey and the and the challenge that comes along with some of these things in actually starting your own your own creative business Um, and it's something that not everyone in any every business understands I don't think some people in other businesses starting and working for themselves have a very forefront approach where people can can actually see what is going on behind the business. And so it's easier and it's as if you're not really working for yourself. You're working uh, around other people and you're working in a team or you have 
employees or, or this, that, and the other. And so being in a creative business as a freelancer, working as yourself, I think some of these things, and some of these things are unexpected and they do and they will come up throughout the course and I just wanted to talk on them today. And the first one is to understand that people generally don't take creative freelancers very seriously. And I I do say that uh, in a way that I'm not trying to offend anyone that would ever think that they don't take them seriously, but I would just want to I just want to touch on the point that people often think that the job isn't as hard as other people would think them to be. And I, I've, I've already touched on this, I'm sure, and I, and I will touch on this. I spoke about it last week in the episode of Working for Free in that people will often ask creative their creative friends to do work for them for free. And I think in that way, they're just expressing the fact that they don't take their job seriously and they don't take what they're trying to do uh, very seriously. But in this aspect, I'm more talking about... Um, the fact that people think that because you work a creative job that you don't have any constraints on you or that you don't have any any end goals, any deadlines, any any structure, any hours, any anything that you've got to work around. I think people can take that for granted. You, as a creative person, you need to sort of prove them wrong in that way and, and, and really show them that your job is serious and you're actually out there doing work and you're actually producing things on a day-to-day. As I said, it's one of the it's one of the hard things about working from home and being a a freelancer is that is that all your work isn't out there on display. So at any one given time, a lot of people won't know exactly what you're up to or, or what you've been up to in the past few weeks, I guess. And so that that's hard to know. Whereas if I was someone who was operating a business who had a storefront, it's very easy to see what that person's been up to. It's very easy to see what they've been working on and what their what their progression is. And the things that they've been up to on a day to day, because everyone would know uh, what that involves. If I was to open my own cafe, people would know what I was up to on a day to day basis. I would, I would have staff there. They would think that because I have a store and because I have staff and because I just am working in a role where they know specifically what it is that I do, that I must be up to more than someone who is working behind closed doors. And that's something that we, as creatives, have to sort of knock down that. And, and sort of show people that there is more to being creative than just than just working your own hours and just doing whatever you want to do because it isn't always as simple as that. And that leads me into into point number two, and that is is that you have to take your work schedule seriously, and you can't you can't really compromise a lot um, for almost anyone. I feel like a lot of people start out in the creative industry because they want that because they want that freedom and they want uh, more more freedom in their time and they want to be able to do more things for themselves and and while that is the case and while that is a aspect of it I think in the beginning it's so important to 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 be able to lay that groundwork and say well I'm I have these hours and and here's my schedule and be able to put that down and to prove to yourself I think more so than anyone else in the in the beginning that you have an actual job and that you're working towards something and that your hours are worth something because if you start to get into a routine where you're not working and you're not actually executing on any of your plans, I think that's when you can start to become in a hole and and that is a spiral, I think, in that you think that your hours aren't worth anything so that you can just take a break whenever you want to take a break and that isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're someone that can can come and pick yourself back up from that but it's when it becomes front-facing to everyone else and you start to uh, start to compromise your own time and your own working hours for other people. I think that's when people can start to take advantage and and start to not think that what you do is is actually worth anything because every time they ask to do something, you're always free, or you're always always uh, ignoring your work that you really have to do in order to uh, go spend time with someone or go on a holiday or go this that and the other. Um, I think it's so important to not to not compromise on your work in that first uh, in that first stage of of starting your own business. I think it sets that groundwork for other people to know that yeah they're actually serious about what they're trying to do here and what they're trying to accomplish, and that I'm not going to stand in their way and I'm not going to to take that for advantage and going to sort of treat it as if I was in my own job. 
uh, because I wouldn't expect them to ask me just to go hang out when I'm at work. And so when they're at work, I'm going to respect their hours as well. And I think being able to put that in the forefront right in the beginning is so important. And as I said, this is not to say to any of your friends that you can't ever hang out because I think, as I said, being creative, one of the things that does come along with that is, is being able to compromise and being able to change up your work schedule. But in the beginning, it's it's compromising those such important things that you're trying to work towards and, and not having the hours because that can become a slippery slope to you're not working ever and people taking advantage of you. And you have to be careful for your own your own self-worth that you don't start to compromise your own time because once you think to yourself that you, you're not worth or the hours you're working aren't worth anything, then then that's when you start to become in real trouble. And now point number three is one of the things that I think a lot of people don't do enough. It's one of those things from any old business that I don't think people would take into their own business uh, in their own freelance business is to is to give yourself respect as an, as an employee and and your own business owner and and to have that respect to yourself you wouldn't walk into a job and expect just to um and you wouldn't expect to have to work 16 hours a day without a break you wouldn't expect to have to to never have a lunch hour you'd never expect to not get paid for your work or to be able to have holidays when you want holidays or have certain times off if you're if you're not feeling well or this that and the other so giving yourself that respect as an employee and as a business owner and having that mutual respect for yourself i think because we do work those two different roles and to not um overexert yourself um and but, but to also not have expectations on yourself i think that's that's being able to have respect for yourself as a as a business owner is is to have expectations and to have good goals you're aiming towards and so to not let yourself down uh, in that way. You've got to have respect that you're actually going to do the work and going to do the work that you've that you've set yourself. But then when you do complete the work, I think equally as important is to be able to give yourself that reward that, that you've been striving towards. And so have goals, but then have other things that you're trying to, to work towards. If you, if you have a goal of, of making X amount of money in the year, or because you are interested in heading on a holiday at the end of the year. Well, if you hit that target, I think it's important to be able to have that, to be able to have that break and have that bit of time away, or or have that other thing that you've you've been trying to work on. And and so having that respect with yourself as an employee, I think, is so important because you wouldn't you would never turn up to another job uh, without being paid for it. You'd never turn up to a job year in year out if you weren't going to get an increase in your wage. Or some type of promotion, I guess. Um, so why would you expect that of yourself in your own business? I know that it's going to be a grind in the start. I know that you're not going to be making a lot of money, and you can't you can't really compromise on those sort of things. But it doesn't mean you still can't reward yourself, or that you still can't have breaks, and you still can't can't do the style of creative work that you really like to do. If it does come down to that, you've got to give yourself. I don't want to be working for eighty hours a week if I'm just working on work that I don't enjoy. And so I'd much rather work for 40 hours a week and then take time off to go and do other things that I, I really enjoy. And and having having time to do things that I enjoy within my own work, I think is just a way of being able to reward myself as an employee. And I know that there are things that I, I have to do in my business that I don't particularly enjoy, but there are so many aspects of it that I, I do really enjoy and I, I really can't wait to do. So having those at the forefront and remembering why I'm here in the business and why I'm continually trying to strive forward is is so important. And having that respect, as I said, having the respect for those targets and those goals, uh, it just has to be your number one priority for you as a business owner. And this leads into number four, and I guess it's it's sort of a uh, extension of three, is that you need to be able to have breaks. Um, you need to have breaks away from work as as you would in any job. And it's, I guess, part of the reason I've been talking about, I spoke about last week of having the different aspects of my business, um, having the wedding photography uh, branch of my business, but then also having the landscape photography branch of my business. And I don't like to um, allow those two to collide because I'm trying to hold them at different ends. And I, I try to see one as, as actual work and I try and put as much effort as that into that as I can. But then I give myself breaks to go and do the other style that I, that I really enjoy as well in the same way that I give myself breaks to go and do other things that I enjoy outside my business. And that I think that it's so important to, to be able to take breaks 
uh, from the things you're working on and have and being able to have those deadlines and working towards something, you can work hard up towards that. But after that, just know, know that there is something in uh, there is something in sight at the end and you're able to have a break. And speaking of breaks, it's not just longer term breaks, it's just short term breaks with like throughout the day. I'm I'm aware that people like to sit down and like to get into a flow and like to be able to do their work and I'm 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 all for that working for long periods of time in a row but you need to be able to take breaks and work respectable hours that you would you would then deem respectable for anyone else to work um it sort of goes against what I was saying before but you you need to you need to work an amount of hours but you can't overwork yourself because that's an easy way to dig yourself into a hole um and work hours that are respectable like I know that I'm not going to work in the evening I know that I don't get a lot of great work done in the early hours of the morning I've come to uh, understand that over the past couple of years and so working hours that are respectable to me I know that I, I, I get to choose my hours but I still have to have hours it's not that I don't choose any hours because I know I have to have them somewhere or the other and I can I can do four hours in the morning and four in the afternoon if I really want to but I know the best hours that work for me but having breaks in between is is still is still something that I incorporate into those hours. And I think one of the big things for me last year was was actually taking a break for lunch. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that I think a lot of creative people overlook and can often just find themselves caught up in work and just having to have lunch at their own computer and just working through that break. But I think having even 15 minutes just to eat and having time away from the computer, I know that I'm someone who who gets so strange just staring at a computer all day. So having time to go and walk around and actually go and do something or you know, make my lunch or go outside and get some fresh air is so important um, in in that routine. And it actually makes me more productive in the afternoon, having that break away and then coming back because I know what I have to do when I get back and I have time to think about things, I have time to step back from the work and think how I can improve actually going forward in the afternoon. Obviously, I don't take breaks. I don't, I don't come sit down and then half hour later hop up and have another break every 15 minutes because I would never be able to get into a state where I'm actually doing productive work but still so important to, to actually schedule in those breaks and that's not to say that you can't be flexible on them but scheduling them in I think allows you to work towards something and say well I'm going to work for three hours here after which I take a break and I move on to something else and I switch up things that I'm working on and and having respect for yourself in that way and to that other things that you would think respectable of of someone else working in any other career and finally, the last one is to not think that you can do everything yourself. I think it's such an important point, but it's such an overlooked point. It's one that um, a lot of people think that starting in a in a freelance career is means that you have to just do everything yourself, and means that you have to do you have to be everything in your business, and you have to be every aspect of your business yourself. And it, it doesn't have to be the case. You you would never expect that of of anyone else working in any other business you would you know you would never expect someone working for someone else to then have to do the role of three or four different people without without being equally compensated for that or being able to have the skills to do that i don't think that it's expected of any freelancer that they should know the ins and outs of every aspect of their business i know that i wear heaps of hats in the business but it doesn't mean that I have to be an expert at all of them and it doesn't mean that I can't outsource any of those things to other people. It's been one of the things that I've been really trying to look at this year is that really targeting my work into areas that I know that areas that I know that I can be effective in. I know that I'm not an expert on everything and so outsourcing some of the things that I do struggle with and I do I do find uh straining and and just downright hard and just that I struggle to sit down and actually work on outsourcing some of those things i think for me is a is a good thing there can be a limit up to which you can work and up to the amount of things that you can do in your own business i'm already trying to do so many different things so adding more things on top of that uh, just just makes it even harder for me and anything that can make it easier i think um, is, a, is a good thing and so outsourcing different things i know for me one of the things that that i i enjoy but I, i'm not the best at or not any expert at by any means is is my own finances and so having someone be able to come in and and work on those for me and and just take care of those you know i'm not saying hiring an admin assistant to be here with me all day every day i'm not saying that i'm saying hiring someone to take care of the of of just small menial tasks 
that you don't enjoy. And it's not having someone on all day, every day, because let's be real, no one who's a freelancer is able to do that and be able to afford that even. But having someone take care of just small little things that will free you up on hours other in other places. I feel like as my business expands, I'd much rather be working on uh, the things that I enjoy rather than here at the computer on admin work and just being engulfed in that sort of work for the rest of uh, the hours of the day when I, I'd much rather be outside uh, working on the stuff that I really enjoy. And so I think that's what, that comes back to heaps of the points that I've been talking about in Bound to Take Your Business Seriously is that you need to be able to take yourself seriously as 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 a professional and and know that you're an expert in one thing but you may not be an expert in everything and so asking for help and outsourcing things where you can I think is just as important as anything else and so these have been a few things that I've been working on myself and I'm no way confident or uh, adequate enough in all of them I, th- I feel like I need to completely work on all of those things but they're just some of the things that I do think about and I think they're important for anyone starting a freelance business and starting their own business in any way uh, to think about because there are a fair few of those uh, things that you don't think about until you actually start in your own business and and so ha- and so having that outlook from the inside and the experience that I've gained I think is able to help other people and for me it's just as important to be able to get these down because it reminds me that I need to be working on them on them more in my own business and, and being able to push forward with it I need to implement all of these things, if not more. So anyway, guys, I think that is going to be the end of today's episode. I really hope you did enjoy this one. I hope it was uh, interesting and I hope you found it actually helpful for you and anyone out there interested in in uh, starting their own business. I'm, I'm sure would have found that so helpful and and being able to take some of the things from that. I think being able to be able to learn things from different people and and, and being able to see different experiences from other people is so important and it, it, it's definitely something that I'm still trying to work on and still trying to take things from other people and, and see the way that they do things and implement them in my own business. So with that being said, guys, I really do hope you have enjoyed this episode and I will see you or I will speak to you next Friday. Have a good week.